There lived a husband and wife. For a long time they already wanted to have a child, but he was not there. One day, my wife fell ill. The husband asked her what she wants the most. The wife replied that there was a magnificent garden nearby, where many of the most beautiful flowers grow. There is a beautiful Rapunzel in the garden. It looks so fresh and so green that she really wanted to taste it. But the garden was surrounded by a high fence, and no one dared to enter it, since this garden belonged to one witch. She possessed great power, and everyone in the world feared her. The husband loved his wife very much, and decided to get a Rapunzel for her, no matter what it cost him. And so at dusk he climbed over the stone fence into the sorceress's garden, in a hurry picked up a whole handful of green Rapunzel, and brought it to his wife. She immediately made herself a salad from it, and ate greedily. She liked this salad so much that the next day she wanted even more than before. The husband made his way into the garden again, but the witch was already standing in front of him. She glared at him angrily and said that he would pay a lot for stealing the Rapunzel. He asked the witch not to be angry, because he tore off the Rapunzel for his wife, who was very ill. And he loves her so much. Okay. The witch's anger passed a little, and she said that if it was true, she would allow him to collect as much Rapunzel as he wanted, but on one condition. He will have to give the witch the child okay. who will okay. be born to his wife. The husband agreed with fear. When the wife gave birth to a daughter, the witch immediately appeared, took the child with her, and named her Rapunzel. Rapunzel oh, became no. the most beautiful girl in the world. When she was 12 years old, the witch locked her in a tower. That tower was in the forest, and it had no doors or stairs. Oh. Only at the very top was a small window. When the witch wanted to climb the tower, she called Rapunzel to pull her sides down. And Rapunzel had long, beautiful hair. She hears the voice of the witch, loosens her braids, ties them up to the window hook, and the hair falls down, and the witch then climbs up, clinging to them. Hello. Several years passed, and the king's son happened to ride a horse through the forest where the tower stood. Suddenly he heard singing, and it was so pleasant that he stopped and began to listen. Rapunzel sang it in her wonderful voice. The prince wanted to climb up. He began to look for the entrance to the tower, but it was impossible to find him. He once saw how the witch climbs up the braids that Rapunzel lowered her. And the next day, when it was already getting dark, the prince drove up to the tower and called Rapunzel. She heard, pulled her braids down, and the prince climbed up. Rapunzel, seeing that a man she had never seen came to her, was very frightened at first. But the prince spoke to her affectionately and said that his heart was so touched by the singing that he decided to see her without fail. Then Rapunzel ceased to be afraid and when he asked if she agreed to marry him, she gave her consent and held out her hand to him. But they just did not know how to go down together. They figured out that when the prince came, he would always take a piece of silk with him, and Rapunzel would weave a ladder out of it. And when the ladder is ready, they will go down it together and leave. The sorceress did not notice anything until one day Rapunzel asked why it is easier to drag the prince up. The sorceress understood everything, got angry and clutched in rage at Rapunzel's beautiful hair. I wrapped them around my left arm several times and with my right grabbed the scissors and cut them off. She took the sorceress into the dense thicket of Rapunzel and hid her there. She tied the severed braids to the window hook, 
and when the prince appeared, she pulled them down. The prince climbed up and saw the witch. She looked at him with her malicious look and said that he would never see Rapunzel. The king's son was beside himself with grief and jumped out of the tower in despair, but the thorny thorns of the bushes, on which he fell, gouged out his eyes. The blind prince wandered for several years in grief and sorrow through the forest, all the time grieving and crying for his beloved lost. Once he went into a dense thicket. Suddenly the prince heard someone singing, it seemed so familiar to him, and he went to meet him. When he came closer, Rapunzel recognized him, threw herself on his neck and cried bitterly with joy. Two tears fell in his eyes, and the prince regained his sight and began to see as before. He brought her to his kingdom, and they lived for many, many years in happiness and joy. A long time ago, a poor girl, Karen, lived with her mother in a distant village. In the summer she had to walk barefoot, and in the winter in rough wooden shoes, which rubbed her feet terribly. And then one day the old lady shoemaker sewed Karen shoes from scraps of red cloth. She brought the girl a gift exactly on the day Karen's mother went to heaven. And the poor girl had no choice but to put on new shoes for the funeral. Although red shoes were not at all suitable for mourning, Karen had no others. At this time, a large old carriage was passing through the village, and in it was an important lady. She saw the girl, felt sorry for her and decided to take her home. For many years Karen lived with a lady and never took off her favorite red shoes. But the girl has grown noticeably, and the time has come to buy her new shoes. So, the lady took Karen to the store. The lady was already old, and therefore could not see the correct pair of shoes. Then she asked Karen to choose the most modest black shoes to wear to church. But in the shop window there were bright red shoes. They were exactly like the ones that the shoemaker had once made for Karen. And so the girl told the lady that she had chosen the simplest shoes, and the mistress gladly paid for them. Sunday came, and the old lady ordered Karen to get ready for church. The mistress told the girl to dress modestly and restrainly. But Karen so wanted to put on new shoes that she could not resist, and went to church in red shoes. And all the people in the service every now and then looked at Karen's feet. After dinner, the lady learned from the people that Karen had come in red shoes. The lady could not stand the shame and decided to go home early. But an old soldier was waiting for them at the church gate. Hello. He bowed deeply to the ladies, saw the red shoes, and began to praise them as never before. Nice. Karen danced with delight. And then her legs began to dance by themselves, as if the shoes had some kind of magical power. The girl was frightened, wanted to throw off her shoes, but they were tight. The shoes were firmly attached to her feet. And Karen had to dance. She danced through the fields and meadows, in the rain and in sunny weather, both at night and during the day. And then one night the girl found herself on the edge of the forest. It was dark and scary all around. Then suddenly a white light blinded Karen. It was an angel in a long white robe. Behind his shoulders were large wings that descended to the very ground. No. He looked at the girl sternly and said that for her deceit, pride and disobedience, she would dance for eternity, until she dries up like a mummy. Before Karen had time to say a word, the shoes grabbed her and led her on. For a long time, the girl's shoes were worn over the stones, through the thicket and thorn bushes. Sharp thorns dug into Karen's legs and scratched them bloody. And then she danced to the small secluded house of the forester. The girl sat down on the porch and cried bitterly. She managed to repent of her disobedience and most of all wanted to apologize to the lady. When the forester heard the girl okay. crying, he took pity on her and decided to help. Then he took silver scissors and cut the red shoes. Karen was overjoyed to be able to control her legs again. 
Now, more than anything, she wanted to go home. The girl thanked the forester, and he presented her with his daughter's old wooden shoes. Putting on her shoes, Karen thanked her rescuer again and ran home. So, she raced through the fields, making her way through the forests day and night, until she saw the outline of her house. Wow. Then the girl gathered her last strength and rushed to the entrance. She ran into the drawing room, where sat a sad lady, who had been mourning her named daughter all week. Seeing Karen, the mistress beamed with joy. The girl threw herself into the arms of her wet nurse and began to apologize for her disobedience. Of course, the mistress forgave Karen, and the girl promised never to deceive anyone again.